Hello you guys, my name is Sinistic and welcome back to Everlasting Summer. And I also have to mention, thank you for Kami Jesus for pointing out that it's not the 21st century and that's the 19th century. Proves how great my Roma my numeric or Roman numerals are. There we go. Can't speak today. That's how much Final Fantasy that I play. Anyway, back let's go, let's jump back into this. <clears throat> As we last left off, we had this fair maiden here, and back to Semyon's dialogue, alright. My logic didn't let me down this time. <clears throat> then again, pioneer uniform in the 20, 20, 21st century. That's 21st century, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. And then again, girls here. Hmm. I don't really know much about the pioneer camps, but are they just like some summer camps just in Russia? Hmm, not sure. <clears throat> I froze, unable to make a step. I felt very much like running away. Running as far away as I could from this place. Far from the bus, gates, statues, and far from this bloody bird with its siesta. I don't think she said one word yet, though. Just run free, like a wind, faster and faster, waving to the planets passing by and waking to the galaxies. I don't know, Semyon. We might as well just talk to this girl, right? Right? Run, become a pulsar ray, and turn into vest vestigial radiation, run to the face of the unknown. Like, I'm trying to imagine this conversation, like, he's just thinking all this himself. He's, like, staring up into the sky, and this girl's just, like, staring at him. Run no matter where, as long as it's far away! Emphasis from this place. Oh, she got, she got closer. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and smiled. Hmm. Could not help but notice a beauty, and I was trembling with fear. Yes, cause you know, beauty means that I'm gonna die soon. Gosh, you're you're so beautiful that I'm frozen in shock. Human instincts work despite of consciousness, and only five percent of the brain is responsible for the cognitive processes. The remaining ninety-five percent, ninety-five percent, are always busy sustaining life, and in particular, ensuring stable functioning of the hormonal system. Huh. I wonder why. I wonder why you just know that. Know that offhandedly. I desperately, desperately wanted to get less complicated and stop thinking in formal quotes from the encyclopedia, though my thoughts appeared one by one, being stupid, out of place, as if taken from the internal monologue of a hero or some junkie, soft-cover soft crime fiction book. Well, I mean, we've been doing this, like, internal narration for the past two playthroughs episodes. Pretty Slavic face, long braids and look, long braids looking like two arms of fresh hay and blue eyes in which you could drown. I could drown. Oh my gosh, girl. Your your eyes remind me of the ocean. I could just drown in them. Yes, there you go. That's Semyon's pickup line of the day. Pioneer girl? Um, okay. Hi! You must just you must have just arrived Oh my god. I cannot talk to a day, you guys. I'm sorry. Let me just uh, let me just clear the throat right now. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> All right, all right. Okay. Hi, you must have just arrived. Oh, oh, holy! Oh my gosh, another choice. <laughs> I almost forgot this was a visual novel with choices. Okay, come on, save game. Yep. Okay, let's go back. Where's the back button? What the heck? Okay, right here, right here. All right, all right, all right. Okay. So this girl just asked us, "Hey." I already forgot what she asked us. Hey, are you? Oh yeah, you just arrived. Okay. We can either not reply. Or reply. Well, I mean, there's no point in not replying to her. I don't think she- she doesn't look like she's any harm, unless pioneer camps are actually a lot worse than I think they are. But in that case, I probably shouldn't reply to her. But in this case, I am gonna reply to her. Oh, uh, yeah. Alright then. Oh, alright then. Welcome. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna be jumping over, all over the place for her voice. Oh, I gotta find it, gotta find it. Alright then. Welcome. Yeah, she's gonna just enunciate every word. She smiled broadly. Strange, it looked like as if a normal girl is in front of me. I mean, she looks pretty normal. A pioneer camp's not supposed to be normal. Bah, I shouldn't have returned here. The woods and the fields seem better. But what shall I do next? Try to speak with her as if she were human or run away or whatever. I mean, those are pretty much the only two options, right? Either talk to her or run away. Or, you could just stand there and not talk to her and not run away. I don't know if that would be the best option, though. 
The blood was pumping unbearably, unbearably into my head, tearing it apart from the inside a little bit more, and the poor pioneer girl would be splattered with the hideous contents of my skull. Because obviously your head's going to explode like right now, and it's going to explode, and then all of your brain guts are just going to go all over your face. Jeez. <coughs> wow, Jesus, I need a lot of water. <coughs> What's funny about that? The girl gazed over me. It sent shivers down my spines and my knees started to tremble. N nothing Great then. Great? What's great about that? Suddenly I felt like Lana had beat all bead. The bus behind me, the winter yesterday, and the summer today. Take off the itchy pullover and just believe that it, w it all was real and it all was meant to be and that it all at last was for the better. I mean, I really wanted to go to that college reunion. I feel like that would have been funner instead of ending up here in a pioneer camp. And you must probably know. You should come to our camp leader. She'll tell you everything. Look, you can go straight ahead to the square and turn left and you'll see small cabins. She pointed at the gates as if she knew what was behind them. Well, you can ask- the wait, what is this? Well, you can ask someone where Ol Olga Dimitrieva's cabin cabin is. Dimitrieva uh, is a patronymic of a different mythology and prefer she's the first name of the son of Uh, huh. Interesting. I um got it. Of course I didn't. I mean, I'll do my best. And I got to go. <coughs> 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 oh my gosh. Not sick or anything, just so much coughing. The girl waved her hand at me and disappeared behind the gates. Seems as if for her, I was something. Wait, what? No, no, that's not it. She just came up and talked to us and just left. That doesn't mean we're the man in her life. Ordinary. Oh, oh, okay. Did not notice the dot dot dot. Ordinary. Yes, we are ordinary. And all the show with the bus and the travels and the waking or sleeping were troubling only me. While everything, well here everything was just like it was supposed to be. Camp leader? Pioneer uniform? Are they making a historical reconstruction here? I hope I wouldn't find Lenin staying on top of an armored car at the square. But even that would not surprise me right now. Oh, uh, I think that's a historical reference to something I don't know. Dang it. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. Ooh, another picture. Mere 50 meters ahead, a small one-story house has popped up on the left side. The billboard near the <laughs> the billboard near the door said clubs. I don't see it. Is it is it this right here? Oh, probably because I can't read Russian. I was about to come closer. Oh no, another woman! Oh god. Uh, when the door suddenly opened, a short girl wearing a pioneer uniform came out. Her pretty face gave me an impression of very a torment for the fate of the whole mankind with a truly universal sorrow. Wow, that was an extremely detailed sentence. Um, Hello, miss! Oh. As soon as the, she saw me, the girl froze as if friday, frightened. Hello, miss! How are you? I see that you are very embarrassed right now, and I don't know why. I froze too, considering what was the best to do. To approach first or wait until she shows some initiative. Or maybe run away after all. No, no, we're not running away. Just because we saw another- No, this is the second encounter with a woman. We can't run away from a woman. Although the last option was constantly suggested only by my self-preservation instinct. At least that's what I'd like to believe. Not the worst human instinct, but one far from being the most logical. Hey, sure, yeah, my, I agree with you on that, I guess. If this instinct played poker against the deductive abilities, the result would be predetermined. And those deductive- oh, oh gosh, it's getting slower, okay. Deductive abilities, or at least their semblance, were hinting at me that there was no need to be afraid of this girl. Okay. I mean, good job for your semblance- oh my gosh, more woman. Suddenly, somebody jumped out of the bushes nearby. Are those- is it the same bushes that we called that were super impossibly lush earlier? A girl wearing a red bright t-shirt with the USSR written on it. What? The CCP USSR. 
pieces are wood. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. No, I don't. Uh, I don't know why they're not the same thing. Such exact reproduction of it. The age. Oh God, Simi, you're so weird. She looked quite short from the distance. I was probably younger than both Pioneer girls at the gates and the girl at the door at the clubs. Yeah, I mean that looks about right. I'm guessing we're about like 18. Yeah, did he say he was 18? I think, and then she looks kind of like, I don't know, 14? At last, I decided to come closer, but the U USSR, <laughs> as I called her in mind, jumped in from the girl and started telling something while sawing in the air. The other girl seemed confused, looked down, and made no reply. <sighs> Just imagine this conversation. We have a girl that shows up frozen, then I show then I look at her frozen, and then the girl in the red shows up and she just looks frozen, and we aren't saying anything. I want to imagine that we've been on the verge of a minute of not saying anything. I would probably continue to observe their amusing dialogue, but the USSR suddenly pulled something out of her pocket and started shaking it in front of the first, first girl's face. Is it a pocket knife? Oh no no, making a Swiss army knife. She's like, oh, girl, purple-haired ha purple -haired, haired girl, here's a knife. I think this guy's might be dangerous. Oh, okay, that's less than what I thought. <clears throat> this something turned out to be a grasshopper. Huh. I wonder how long you had that in your pocket, red-haired girl. That's a little bit odd. Oh gosh, what voice should she have? Um. Squib uh, squealed the first girl. She must be knocked too keen on insects, as she instantly rushed towards where Lenny presumably made a speech about the accomplishment of workers and peasants' revolutions. That's to say, towards the square. The USSR girl, or girl, glanced at me grindly, playfully, and dashed after her. Not a bad start of the day. I have absolutely no clue where I am. Besides that, there are some kids here role-playing pioneers. Ah, uh huh. And as far as I can tell, this place is located thousands of miles away from my home. It might be even a different reality. Okay. Ugh. I'm pretty sure we agreed that this is the dream. Did we agree that, or did I disagree on that? I don't know. Jeez. And th and this was indeed a reality. Yes, because you know we established that we can feel pain. I mean, everything around me seems so real. Oh wait, if a little embellished that I was starting to fall into thinking that in fact my previous life could have been just a dream. Uh, let's 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 not think about that route. And what should I do now? I don't know. What should we do now? I I would think we want to go back and talk to those girls. I was picking the cracks in the towel. Okay, who does that? I don't know anyone who like sits in the tile and then starts looking at the stuff and starts picking them up. That's a little bit weird. Which paved the pathway and stared aimlessly at the club's building. Just a few more seconds before I have to come up with some decision. A few more seconds? Ha what? You haven't come up with a decision right after that? That's when I recall myself rolling on the grass weeping. I cringed in disgust. Oh. <laughs> Remember that pathetic moment that happened? Yeah, that was really sad. Perhaps it's another instinct when all energy for whimpering and self-pitying is used up. The body either goes into hibernation or mobilizes its reserves. Huh. You have a bunch of instincts that you just like to list off, don't you? Lion seemed to have chosen the second option because out of the blue, I got the determination to figure out what was going on. Yes. Even though I feel like you should have figured out that earlier, but you know, better late than never. In order to do that, I'd act like a man, like a human, to maintain the dignity of a representation of my own world. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Follow the path to the left and to the right, which the small, which is small, which is st which stood small cabins, apparently homes to the local pioneers. Actually, they look quite cozy from the outside. Even though I was born in the Soviet Union, I have never been part of its grandchildren or organizations. Neither the pioneers nor even the younger October children. Ag. Huh. Darn it. I feel real, I feel bad that I don't know what the October October children are. The the most that I know about Russia is from AP US from high school and cuz when I was at MUN they usually give out countries and Soviet Union was one of one of them, but they actually called it the Russian Federation, so I guess it's not really well, I guess it is the same thing. I imagine the daily life of this typical pioneer camp a bit differently. Huge barracks with long rows of metal bunks. Wake up, call at 6 o'clock. Play it by a siren. One minute to make your bed. 
and then joining the formation at the drill score. Hmm. Sounds very orderly. Or wait! Could I be confusing it with something else? What else could you confuse it with? I was suddenly hit in the back. Oh my gosh. Is it the... Uh, is it, It's either a new girl or I believe it's a redhead girl. I staggered but remained on my feet. Turned around prepared to become a hero on while fighting for my life. Yes. When I turn around, I'm gonna... Whoever this is, I'm just gonna punch you so hard in the face that... My instincts. That I'm just gonna blame it on my instincts. Oh, oh. Wait. What? Wait, okay, you look like the purple-haired girl from earlier, but did you, like, dye your hair or something? But all I found was another girl standing before me. Uh, I guess it's a different girl, but you look, you look very similar to the one that we just saw earlier. My mouth hung open in surprise. Yeah, if I was- if I saw a girl showing her belly button, that I would uh, drop my mouth in surprise as well. Uh, okay. This girl looks super tough, so I'm gonna have to give her, like, a really gruff voice. Pick your jaw off the floor! Okay, no. No, 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 no. That's, like, that is, like, a super, super toned -down, down version of Batman. Not gonna do that. Okay. Pick your jaw up the floor! Okay. I closed my mouth. Same pioneer uniform, but it looked, let's say, provocative. The way she was wearing it. Yes. Because, you know, it emphasizes her boobs more. Yay, boobs! Like all the girls I had met before, this one was rather cute. But her overly arrogant expression killed any desire to get to know her any better. Ha. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say. That's a funny thing to say. So, you're new here? Semyon? Uh, what? Oh. Wow. She stopped looking- she stopped looking all dark now and her face is normal. Whoop. Fine! See ya! She dashed, a, she dashed a threatening glance at me and walked past. I waited for the pioneer girl to turn the corner. Who knows what else she might have been up to. Well, it's considering the fact that she hit us on the head and then just said, Oh, well, gotta go. I don't know what other mysteries that await this girl, or for us for this girl. The most interesting thing was that this hostile girl seemed completely normal to me. She did not give the feeling of some deadly danger. I'm pretty sure all the people here aren't really giving feelings of deadly danger. I think I just want to call that out on our instinct. Except maybe the danger of getting punched in the nose. Eh, we can handle that danger.